As the threat landscape continues to evolve, organizations have been compelled to optimize their own threat intelligence capabilities. Securing a corporate information systems environment requires a multi-step approach as today's threats and attacks are increasingly varied and complex. Organizations must predict the likelihood of threats and attacks coming their way, spot them early on, implement operational controls, monitor user activity, and audit information systems processes. Say that in one breath. And in the event of a cybersecurity incident, they then need to be capable of tracing evidence while preserving forensic detail and swiftly restoring the system to normal in order to ensure operational and business continuity. Cybersecurity analysts will need to make senior executives more aware of the threat landscape and emphasize the importance of robust and mature security processes. Reporting must present a complete picture of threats at all levels. Remember, at the end of the day, it's up to the cybersecurity analysts to apprise management of areas where improvement is needed. Keep in mind through all this that although many risks come from the outside, it's not uncommon for a cyber incident to occur due to actions by an employee, whether in an error or deliberately. Informational security risks come in both internal and external packages. A robust risk assessment is critical to protecting organizational assets, operations, and earnings from cyber threats and attacks. It will be necessary to minimize risk exposure by implementing strong and appropriate security controls. The central question to this is, how are the appropriate cybersecurity controls selected? This is exactly where risk assessment comes in. In order to assess risk, you need to first identify all information assets. This includes networks, servers, desktops, laptops, mobile devices, operating systems, applications, other software, and data and intellectual property. After identifying information assets, you need to define what risks might affect those assets. Analyze risk potential. Then, analyze those risks in order of high, medium, and low damage potential. There are two methods to accomplish this. A quantitative analysis is the process of assigning real numbers in terms of potential costs and damage to a business entity and assigns a statistical probability to each specific risk occurring in both the short and long term. A qualitative analysis depends on using a variety of real and subjective scenarios to identify the security-related risks. This tends to be a more subjective approach and results only in relative costs, as opposed to hard costs being determined. This approach takes the management's perception of business-related risk into account and classifies assets as high, medium, or low value and assigns each a risk rating based on the likely impact of risks. Technical control review have to do with hardware, software, and firmware that help detect and thwart threats that are termed technical controls. This would include antivirus applications, web filtering software, and firewalls. In order to protect data and systems, technical controls need to be properly configured and implemented. A security analyst will need to review technical controls for completeness, currency, quality, appropriateness, and viability. Wherever there is vulnerability, he needs to be able to fix it. Here's a hint. Only current versions of applications should be installed, and each application should have the latest security patches. Operational controls are security controls that are implemented by people in the organization. Training users to not open emails from unknown sources and avoid potentially unsafe websites are examples of operational control. Vulnerabilities often result from carelessness, ignorance, or even malicious intent on the part of the employee. Robust operational controls are critical to information system security. Analysts need to review these controls to see whether they are comprehensive, appropriate, compliant, reasonable, and properly documented. Be prepared to pinpoint risks and recommend a remedy. The United States Federal Information Processing Standard Publication 199 outlines the application of security categorizations to federal information systems. This method of categorization is based on an estimation of the impact that a security breach resulting in the loss of confidentiality, availability, and integrity of data would likely have on the organization. The likely impact of a security incident falls into one of three categories. High, indicates serious loss to assets or operations, failure of one or more essential operational processes, business interruption, and financial loss. Medium, 
It indicates a short pause in critical operations or moderate loss of assets. Low. This indicates relatively mild damage to assets and no interruption of critical processes.